more 3D printed cameras, modified pineapples, and something that looks kind of like a stingray, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. In our last video, we talked about these 3D printed camera units I built using ESP32 camera modules. If you haven't seen that video, you'll want to check that out first because it adds a lot of context to what we're about to talk about. As I said in the beginning of the video, I've got this Stingray-like kind of looking device. It's got a bunch of antennas on it, and that's because it has a Raspberry Pi, an Alpha wireless card, and a uh, Wi-Fi pineapple with a custom case all stuffed inside this tiny chassis. Did I mention it's got a 150 watt hour battery I built myself in it too? Along with that, as you can see, it's got a dock for these camera units. So they fit in nice and snug and in the bottom of the camera dock, there's actually a micro USB charger. So that anytime you put these in their case and the switch is on, it charges the cameras. Now this whole concept came together because I really like video game gadgets, things like Watch Dogs 2, uh, Call of Duty, you've got all these little sensors and systems you can put out to detect people intruding in your area. Not to mention movies like Mission Impossible and so on. And I wanted something along those lines that is a rapidly deployable camera system. Again, as I said in the last video, I used to work for a security camera company and we would install really permanent systems. There was no concept of something you would want to put up quickly because quite frankly, we didn't work for the military or government. And so in this system, I wanted to kind of flip that on its head and make something that I could flip a switch, put the cameras up, and by the time I'm sitting back down at whatever the base is or you know HQ, my desk, whatever, everything would be online and automatically talking to one another. No configuration needed, flip a switch, put cameras up, get video, simple as that. Now that took a little more engineering than uh, it probably should have, and I ended up using a Wi-Fi pineapple because I wanted some pen testing capability as well. And this was quite the headache of a project. It took me almost four weeks of constant working to figure out how to get all of this to work together in such a small, compact case. And like I said, I even redesigned the case for the Wi-Fi Pineapple, which we'll touch on as well. Now, before I pull this apart for you all and have to spend half an hour putting it all back together very carefully, I wanted to power it up and show you what exactly I'm working with here uh, UI-wise. And so let's switch over to this. I have it booted up and I'm connected via Wi-Fi. So we're going to go to the pineapple interface. And as you can see, you have a fully featured Wi-Fi pineapple. Now I'm going to take one of the camera modules out. We'll take, f I think I have one set up and charged. It just pops out. You flip the switch on the side and then it's got magnets on the back like I covered in the last video, so you can stick it wherever. And for the moment, I'm just gonna sit it here looking up at the ceiling because I don't want you seeing the mess of my room. Now, while that boots up, we'll switch back to the web UI and go over to the Pi. Let's see if I can remember the IP address because it is not statically set because I'm lazy. One, two, three, there we go, Home Assistant. Log in and switch over to CamGrid. There it is. So it took a few seconds to pop up, but all in all, all I did was switch on the box, switch on the camera, and waited 45 seconds, went to the IP address. And this works on mobile phones, this works on tablets, this works on any Wi-Fi device with a web browser. You don't need any special apps or anything. So you've got a tough book, you've got a, you know, random military tablet, you've got an Android phone in your pocket, uh, you've got an Acer Aspire 1 from 2010 for some reason, and that's all you've got. You can load this up. And now that we've taken a look at the software side of things, let's take a look at the hardware. That's where I did a lot of modding to the Pineapple Tetra and where things got really interesting. So let's dive in. So first things first, we're gonna power it off. And I already have the back panel off just for ease here going to unplug the battery because working on anything with power connected is a terrible idea. This is the battery I built. It's just heat shrinked, but right now it's got 18650 cells in a 
6S 2P configuration, which means there's 12 cells in here. And this, these are NCR 18650GA cells. And they are the highest capacity uh, cell you can currently get on the market. And I think I'm gonna do a video about the how I built this battery. Would you all wanna see that? Let me know down below. I ended up printing this in two parts because it was too tall to print as one piece. And I or super glued them together. There are some cracks here and there where there's a little bit of warping and I've addressed that as well. But the front panel where everything's mounted to, I didn't wanna print any overhangs. I print the whole thing vertically. And so what I did here is I made it a panel system. So this just pops out. At some point it'll get glued in, but I need to be able to take it apart to work on it. And everything slips in. And this is the hollow case structure. You can see the inside of it. It's got fuzzies in there from the printing process, but it is just a hollow case. Holes in the bottom for a panel slot up top with a ridge so that the panel top panel has something to sit on go ahead and take all these antennas off here to make things a little bit easier as well now here you can see how the top is a multi-part piece where i have this top panel i have the chassis for the cameras and then it also holds the antennas for the pineapple and the pies wireless card there's also a little surface mount LED here and a switch, obviously, so you can turn it on and off without unplugging the battery. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So, excuse the mess of cables. I had to add a buck converter because the Pi, or the Pineapple, sorry, runs on 12 volts and this battery is a 22 volt battery. And so there's this buck converter in here that steps the voltage down very efficiently to about 13 volts roughly and that is wired into the switch and into the 24 volt led there was just no way i was going to fit the pineapple tetra in its entirety within the case and so i had to go and modify well i modified the tetra by removing several of its ports and then I took measurements of all the components. Like you can see, we've got capacitors sticking out here like a hot rod. And so I've unplugged the Pi. And as you can see, it is just, just a uh, external case. The antenna connectors were already soldered like this. I was really anticipating there to be some right angle PCB mount surface or PCB mount antenna connectors, but there wasn't. There was just these really convenient SMA cables. I did have to add an extension to one just because I couldn't reach where I needed it to go, but all the others were long enough. Now here's where things get interesting. I had to very carefully remove with a hot air gun the USB host port as well as the uh, Ethernet OTG port and the power uh, the barrel jack. Now the barrel jack for power and the USB host weren't too bad to solder to, but the OTG, uh, the micro USB here, was a pain. Even using very tiny wire that I ended up finally getting in place and super gluing so that it wouldn't come loose from bending force, it acts as strain relief. That was just an absolute pain. And I used a very small tip and I had to use a microscope to actually see it, even for a micro USB port. I was blown away by how small those traces were or those pads were now that is going to a usb connector for ethernet that plugs into the pi because i didn't want to add the bulk of ethernet cables and a hub and all that i just have the pi directly connected to the pineapple for ethernet and then on the usb host i have a mini usb connector for the alpha wireless card and I have a power takeoff to go to the Pi, and that runs the Pi, so it doesn't need its own external regulator. And somehow, you can see how it's all spread out on the bench, somehow all of that and the battery fits in this case. I'm really proud of how all of this came together, especially with as long as it took me to figure out all these intricacies. I tried putting it all into a rugged case, like a Pelican case before, but the size I wanted to use was just not big enough. The room, the format, the layout didn't work and anything bigger just got too bulky. I'm sure the 3D printing enthusiast amongst you noticed this here. And this roughness that I was mentioning earlier is in part due to that this is PETG filament. It is a bit more of a difficult filament to print in certain ways. And the 
One of the bigger issues is it requires a higher temperature than ABS and especially PLA plastic. Now I'm using a Monoprice Ultimate 2 printer. It is a very good printer in my experience. However, this is my first time running PETG with it. And the firmware that originally came on the printer had a temperature limit set at 250 degrees Celsius. If the temperature of the hot end exceeded this temperature, then the printer would shut off as a uh, safety measure. And this ended up being a bit of an issue because even though I only had the hot end set at 243, 245 degrees Celsius, it would overshoot that on its initial warm up and go into safe mode or, you know, shutdown mode. And so I ended up digging around and apparently Monoprice released a firmware upgrade for this printer. And so if any of you are using Monoprice printers out there, make sure to check their website for firmware updates because this improved several other things amongst uh, the hot end temperature upgrade, as well as the bed leveling and a few other details. And so I've been really happy with the prints I've been getting lately. Now this is just a test cube, but the layers look immaculate. There's no problems. And I was printing at a faster speed and higher layer height. So look forward to much higher quality prints out of me going forward. Now, if you would like any of the STLs for this uh, project, especially the pineapple case, which I'm going to use in several other projects going forward, make sure to check out my GitHub link down below. And also be sure to check out the Hack5 website down below for your own pineapple Tetris to modify or any other Hack5 gear you might want. I've been Glitch. Thank you all for watching. Glitch out.